Welcome to Joy in Our Town. I'm your host today, Kate McGovern, and today we're talking about issues in our community with a biblical solution and a Christian perspective. And with us today is Kit Miller, and Kit works with um, women and children, Kit, that have came through um, emotional, physical, and spiritual abuse you had mentioned before. So, Kit, tell us what it it's like when you have a woman and her children come to your shelters that begin to bring protection and help to them in the really tough situations that they're finding themselves in. Well, you know, I think a lot of times when people think about someone going into shelter, it's very sad and very yeah. kind of heart-wrenching. Yeah. And kind of for us, there's a little bit of joy there because right away with the kids, you can see that sense of relief and moms too, but sometimes for the moms, it takes a little bit more time than with the kids. Um, so they know that they have some hope. They know that there's somebody there, they're not alone, and they don't have to be um, feeling that um, isolation anymore. Yeah, tell me a little bit about, um, you know, the, the struggles that you see the most that come through your doors. What, what, is, what is the number one thing that is happening when you see the mother and the children come through the door? Well, in, basically in society as a whole, I think that people are pretty much run ragged. Mm -hmm. Everybody is tired and has 10,000 hats on and 10,000 places to be. So a lot of what we work with is single mamas okay. um, and single women. But when you're a mama and you have kids, it, it can pull you in so many more directions. And so I think a lot of people are just really... Um, they're tired. Mm -hmm. They're tired. They're exhausted. They feel like they've um, reached out to every resource and tried to do whatever they could to make things happen before they had to go into shelter. And for a lot of them, they also have a sense of failure. Mm -hmm. I know that Jesus is the healer of the brokenhearted. You've got a lot of broken hearts coming mm -hmm. through your doors. So how does that healing process really begin to start uh, in what you do with the women and children that come through your doors. What, what are the steps that you take pl that take place for them? I think um, for them, feeling accepted. Yeah. No matter where they're at in, in their walk in life, um, feeling accepted for who they are, for where they're at, for what they're going through. Um, we do Bible study on site. And so I think um, some people have a faith background and some people don't. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately for some of those people that do have that faith background, there's a lot of shame mm -hmm. connected to them for that healing. And, you know, there's just that constant struggle there with, you know, that, that conflict. They, they should have done something different or they could have. Sure. And a lot of that is shame-based thinking. Mm -hmm. And so I think for them, knowing that they're accepted and that we're, um, they're not going to be treated different. Um, we have, you know, structure for them that they need to follow and work within, but they're not going to be treated like they're um, a leper. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the transformation that takes place, Kit, um, in removing that shame? I mean, you mentioned acceptance, but mm -hmm. um, what else? What, what is it that you see as you work with mm -hmm. them that really begins to remove the shame and, and brings in the acceptance? Well, I would say probably the first three things are um, the feeling of accomplishment and hope, mm -hmm. um, a feeling of peace, and um, that, that sense of um, moving forward, that yeah. everything isn't just pulling them back down, that they're not completely burdened with everything in the world anymore, that they've got some things removed from their, um, from their you know, set of responsibilities and they're able to just um, feel like they can move forward in a way mm -hmm. of freedom that they didn't have before. And I think with our, with our Bible studies that we do, we do um, not denominational teachings. We just do the basic, you know, things that can help you in the Bible, getting that personal relationship, um, learning how to pray, mm -hmm. learning how to get into the Bible and, and um, study it, and just kind of some of the things that are gonna speak to you as you're moving through life and how you can incorporate those, life application how yeah. you can incorporate some of the Bible into daily living. Because in all honesty, it can be pretty overwhelming if you don't come from any faith background to just um, open the Bible and think that you're going to understand it right away. Jesus is good, but sometimes we're still going to have that sense of confusion. Yeah, it's kind of like wax on, wax mm -hmm. off type thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you know, the scripture that comes to mind, Kit, is, is that... Um, Obviously, Jesus is the healer of the brokenhearted, like what we had shared before. But 
also that um, that he will do immeasurably more than we can ask or think. And when we've got people that are believing in us, like you're talking about, just hope. You know, mm -hmm. hope deferred makes the heart sick. You, we have people coming in that their hearts are sick. They, they've lost their hope. Mm -hmm. And so I know you're doing the Bible studies. Is there anything else that um, you walk them through that actually begins to gain their confidence and their strength back? What, do, what does that look like? That is a huge loaded question because we deal with a lot of life skills, okay. whether that's how to look for jobs, how to dress, how to speak with people, where to go instead of just wasting their time and kind of roaming around. Um, we deal with a lot of different life skills. So we work on budgeting, we work on structure in their own lives. A lot of it has to do with personal responsibility. And for a lot of people that's really hard because some of our clients have been out on their own since they were in their teens. And so they've made some pretty bad choices and they're aware of that, yeah. but they felt like they didn't have any other choice and they had no one to help them learn how to make those choices. And so um, helping to kind of get rid of some of those um, burdens and barriers that have been kind of holding them back sure. and prevent them from moving forward, maybe prevent them from getting housing because of debt um, or um, just bad credit in general because yeah. they needed they needed the food. How were, how else were they going to, you know, um, pay for it other than racking up credit card bills? And ultimately, a lot of things were out of people's control, whether it was a health issue or mental illness that kind of prevented them from keeping some stability in their in their um, lives and in their home. It's just um, we want to teach them that that they're capable. And if they were never taught anything about budgeting or parenting or um, time management, you know we can do that with them and they're not alone. The yeah. staff is working alongside of them and helping them learn these skills. It's not just um, here, sit down at this computer and create a resume. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are not skilled in that at all. And we've seen some of those come through the doors when um, you know, somebody said, here's a computer and here's, here's a template for a resume. And it, wouldn't, it was not acceptable, it just wasn't. And they don't have a sense of, they have more of a sense of defeat and so we don't want that for them. They have to see some light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. um, I know um, comes to mind too that the scripture that says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Mm -hmm. And so when you've got people coming through the door, seeing themselves as victims, you know, because they're coming in with the emotional and physical and spiritual abuse, um, what is it that allows them when they're in the shelter to really actually move forward. I know you're talking about skills, but what's that spiritual transformation that you really begin to see that where the women really grab hold or just through all of it, what is it that you really see them grab a hold of that really gives them that forward movement? I think the fact that they're not dirty and they're mm. not worthless gives them the belief that, well, maybe some of the other stuff that was said to me was also a lie. I think that is the biggest thing that can make them um, feel like that they have some worth and, and can do some of the things that we're asking of them or that basically they're going to have to be responsible for on their own. Mm -hmm. How does the reflection process, you know, that you're, as you're all together, you know, what do you, what's the outcome of just them all beginning to, you know, reflect, you've been in this situation, I've been in this situation and, and hey, we're not bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so share a little bit with me on that. I think that's really hard because a lot of people are at very different places on where they've been mm -hmm. and what they've worked through prior to coming in. For some of the people who have been out of uh, the abusive situations longer, they have done a little bit more self-reflection and they can give some of those people who are new stepping out that idea of, you know, it was hard. It was really hard. Life is not easy. Some of the choices that you're gonna have to make are not easy. And some of the people who were abusive are still pretty close to your family and you're going to have to, you know, make some choices there on how you spend time and and how you relate with all that, but it can be done. Mm -hmm. And so I think that helps them to know that other people have, have come out of it. And some people are really not wanting to talk about what they've moved through, what they've been through, um, but they know that they're moving forward and they're just really uncomfortable with sharing that until you really can get them almost out of a bigger setting and into a smaller setting. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw it just yesterday with one of the clients, we had some other people there doing some work and she was really different. And I thought, what's going on with her? Yeah. That she's just really kind of avoided people, almost physically turning away from them 
to get by them. And I'm like, that's not her. What's going on with her? But it was all the new people, you know, and it wasn't a lot of people. Um, but it was just that discomfort with, um, I'm not sure where I fit in here. And so even being comfortable in your skin to know that, you know, this is, this is kind of home for you right now. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be welcome here. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be other people who are outsiders coming in and you're not going to get treated different. Yeah. So we're talking about acceptance again. Mm -hmm. You know, just let me start. Well, we're going to come back to a second segment, Chris. And um, viewers, we'll be back with you in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Sergeant Bill Emmert, the Illinois State Police. The Illinois Department of Transportation Traffic Safety Division is introducing the Yellow Dot Program. This program alerts first responders at crash scenes of critical medical information that can save a life. The best chance for survival following a traumatic injury occurs when the injured person is seen and treated within an hour of the event. In the moments directly following a crash, seconds count. Participants are providing important medical information that can help make split-second decisions. This is how the program works. The yellow dot decal is placed on a clean driver's side rear window. They need to make sure the surface is clean so the decal will adhere. A yellow personal information card is placed in the glove compartment where participants have included the following. A clear up-close face shot that can be easily identified as a crash victim. And a completed personal information form that includes name, emergency contact information, personal physician's information, medical conditions, recent surgeries, allergies, current medications. The program is a free service provided to all Illinois citizens. Anyone can have their information on a yellow card and have it placed in the glove compartment. Participants can visit www.yellow.illinois.org for information on the program and find a local distribution center. Thanks for learning about this simple program that saves lives. Got a new TV, computer, or cell phone? Waste Commission of Scott County will properly recycle your old e-waste. So don't worry about your data and information. Not sure what items are considered e-waste? It's simple. Anything with a screen or circuit board. No appointment necessary. Just stop by our e-waste facility to drop off your items. The best part? It's free for Scott and Rock Island County residents. E-waste recycling. Good for the environment. Easy for you. Not sure what to do with all those paint cans, cleaners, and other harmful items under the sink and in your garage? This material poses a health risk and is harmful to the environment, so it can't be thrown out. Go to Wastecom.com and make an appointment to bring in your hazardous material. We will dispose of it properly, and here's the best part. It's free for Scott and Rock Island County residents. Proper disposal of hazardous material. Good for the environment, easy for you. Hey kids, what's a great way to start your day? Wake up early and take over the bathroom before your brother? Ah, oh, no. First, fruits and veggies. Second, walk to school. Yeah, we walk the safe route to school every day, Skip. I know, Scout. It's a great way to get some exercise. And look, our community garden. Yep, right in our neighborhood. So we can eat healthy. And move more. Made possible with funding from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Welcome back to Joy in Our Town, and I'm your host, Kate McGovern. Thrilled to be with you here today. And we're going to be talking about issues um, in our community and how we can take biblical solutions with a Christian perspective. And we're back here with Kit, and Kit is, helps women and children that have gone through physical and emotional and spiritual abuse and getting them to a place of wholeness. And so we want to talk a little bit about the hope that uh, you give, um, Kit, and um, share with us, you know, this process, you have shared the skills and things like that, but the process of just stepping in from their world into your world and um, what that all looks like. Well, I think that um, people can get a lot of different tools and resources in a lot of different agencies, and, and we provide them with many, many um, skills just to be able to move forward. And we know that that's going to help them in their daily life. But ultimately, um, having the peace and grace of Jesus is what's going to heal their heart. Yes. Um, we, we think it's real important to be able to um, move forward emotionally, not just physically, 
you know, right. kind of going through the motions in life. And a lot of people have numbed themselves for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so we want them to feel that hope from Jesus. And what, when, when they start to feel that um, really love, someone can love me when I'm, when I'm this unlovable, when they, what, if he really knew everything yeah. about me, would he love me? And it's like, he, he really already does know. And he knew all about that before he ever did those things or those things happened. And he still loves you all the way through it. Um, he knew you before that. He, he knows you now and he's, and he's not left your side. And so when they start believing that in their heart, you can sense um, they have a whole change almost in their countenance and in the way they relate to people, the way they want to interact. Um, a lot of people who are really struggling with um, self-worth really isolate. Yeah. And so we want, um, it's exciting to see. Yeah. It, it, you know, for some of it, it's pretty difficult. It's a pretty difficult walk, but um, it's good on the other side. Yeah. And they need to know that, you know, a lot of things have been hard. This whole journey may be really difficult, but it's going to be worth it. And um, y it's just a piece that you can't, you're not going to get any place else. We can give you a lot of tools on how to budget your books and, and how to, you know, live a really stable life. But you want to have that inner peace. Mm -hmm. And love never fails. Right. We know that is so true. And so how do you draw those that want to stay isolated? How do you draw them out? Well, we encourage um, communication and relations. I mean, we, we try to live somewhat as a community, not just is in isolation of this is, this is your bedroom, this is your apartment, this is where you're going to live. We're going to come together and do some things together. And it always helps when we have fun things to do, whether that's a makeover with makeup and, you know, cosmetics, or whether it's doing something crafty like painting or making jewelry or... Um, you know, um, just this week we had a group come in and, and do some little gift bags for um, the clients. Um, it's easy when it's fun, but the reality is is that, you know, and it's kind of true with our faith too, it's it's easy to pray when things are hard, but it's something that you need to, it's um, a habit you need to form. Yeah. And so you need to do it on a regular basis. And so sometimes we just need to tell them that this is a safe place and um, you can communicate here freely. And some of it's just about fear of how they're gonna be reacted to. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, wanna, we want them to feel that they're worth talking to mm -hmm. and they've got something worth saying and hearing. Yeah, so breaking some of those old habits. Mm -hmm. And old thought processes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, we believe a lot of lies um, that can really start from very young ages, whether that was something that was said to them in school or something that was said to them by a family member. A lot of people live on those lies for a long time yeah. and they're not worth it. They're not worth the time. No, and I think, you know, in Proverbs where it says, you know, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. Mm -hmm. And so they begin to believe that. Mm -hmm. and, and then in Proverbs 4 where it talks about, you know, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the, the issues of life. But if you don't know how to guard your heart, you know, you 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 have nothing there to protect you or to help you and you know you're mentioning the bible studies and you know is that something daily that you do or tell me a little bit about how that christian perspective that you bring into their lives we do the bible studies on a weekly basis as a group but staff is available to work with them at any time and we do have um the sweetest person who does our Bible studies um, is kind of like a grandmother figure, and she's met with um, some of the people just any time she's felt like they needed something after coming out of Bible study, she knew that they needed something special. She's found that and brought it in midweek. And we've done, you know, um, all kinds of things for the clients. It's not just um, in our structured time where this is set because that's not how, that's not how emotions and life works there. Right. Um, and we kind of have to deal with things as they come up. But, you know, it's not only about guarding your heart, but it's about guarding your body. Yeah. And so that's a really hard thing um, for people who have been violated in a variety of different ways to really guard because um, they really felt like they never had any um, control over some of the choices and situations that they were put in. Now, I know you have children that come in too. Mm -hmm. And so how do you minister to the children? Pretty much the same way. It's kids club. It's fun. We have a gal um, leading that who was a missionary in the Czech for 15 years. Oh, and wow. we are blessed to have her. I knew her before she went overseas. And we're just blessed to have her because she has tons of energy and that sweet, gentle spirit that um, kids need to mm -hmm. have that positive um, reinforcement with them just because they've got a lot of questions 
and some of them have lived in a lot of different places with a lot of different people and they just need to have some of those questions answered and um, they just need um, joy. They yeah. need real joy in their life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Genuine. And so with the adults and with the children, how do you compare um, with what they've walked through? Children are so resilient. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how does that healing journey compare? Well, I think kids are probably a little bit quicker to forgive and okay. forget. You know, I think that some of them have been through um, things that have been really, really traumatic, but I don't think that, um, I don't think that they really learn how to harden their heart mm -hmm. or put their guard up as much. Yeah. Some of them have, we've seen them really protect themselves and they've really been taught that, but I think that's a lot of times by the adults. And as adults, when we go through trauma after trauma and struggle after struggle and, um, you know, conflict after conflict, we've really hardened our hearts and put distance between a lot of things so that we feel safer. And ultimately, it's made a lot of people feel very lonely. And, um, you know, and a lot of people can identify this. You walk into a church that you're not used to going to and see how you're greeted. Right. You know, you can tell the churches that are um, very open and welcoming, and it's really hard and uncomfortable for a lot of people in churches to just reach out to new people. It's just uncomfortable. It's like setting, you know, switching up tables when you yeah. go somewhere as a group. Do you want us to all sit now without each other? You know, like we're not going to make it or something, but we've met some really great people that way, right? Mm -hmm. So we want the clients to know, too, that... Um, and the kids to know that you're going to come in, in contact with a lot of different people through your life and how how are you going to treat each other it's kind of a two-way street um, and it's not always easy to teach kids who they can trust and who they can't because a lot of times it was the closest ones to them that violated them um, and caused this you know upheaval in their lives um, but they just don't have that hardness of heart yeah so forgiveness sets us free Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a lot of change going on. Mm -hmm. And so when you think of restoration kit, you know, um, just, you know, things being restored that have been broken. Do you have anything you could share, um, a story with our viewers today that comes to mind for you? Uh, just really a, a, a true, uh, really God story of the restoration power of, of love, forgiveness, mm -hmm. mercy. Mm -hmm. So I've been working with homeless and domestic violence victims for about 30 years now. Wow. And um, time flies. Yeah. <laughs> and um, we've seen some really, really very violent situations that people have survived through. And mm -hmm. we're very blessed. I mean, we're, we're just thrilled that they survived it. Yes. Um, and with that came a lot of scars and a lot of pain. And a lot of them inflicted a lot of, um, a lot of their own kind of self-destructive behaviors onto themselves. Sure. And so it was not until they really, really fully accepted that um, Christ was their savior and he was also their healer and he could bring complete peace. Um, you could just see that the anguish that they had and the self-destruction behavior, it was almost like they were mad at themselves. Yeah. And um, they didn't know where to, I mean, it's just displaced anger but they really have changed and they have a lot of joy mm -hmm. and they give back in ways where they have been traumatized. I guess I would say some people who have, um, who work with um, some crisis pregnancy situations, sure. some people who have given children up for adoption, which is a very difficult choice, yes. but just a blessing. It's just such a blessing to the family who receives that child, but ultimately for you to be able to carry that child has been a blessing. Mm -hmm. You know, to be able to carry that child and know it and turn it over to someone else who is gonna love it. And so it's kinda it's kinda hard to describe. Yeah. Um, but it's um it's amazing to see mm -hmm. and to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And just to be a part of seeing this restoration process and um, you know I I know that we don't want to put a time frame on it, but what do you see in after your 30 some years of doing this, you know, the, the time frame of this restoration process, what does that really look like? Well, um, I think for some people that's been fairly quick okay. because they were so broken, they were so desperate. Whatever you can do for me, I, I'm, I'm here, I'm willing, I'm crying out for help, I'm done. I'm done fighting this fight on my own. I'll take whatever you can give me wherever it's at. And they are just ready to um, devour the word and worship and praise and learn to be a reflection of him. Um, 
and other people have struggled through it. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's taken years to really turn that life around. And some of it has to do with their own struggles with how to get past that trauma. Sure. How do you let go of that pain? And that's something that you let go of over and over and over and over. And that's okay. Yeah. That's okay if you have to keep keep leaving it at the altar. Yeah. As long as, as, long as you keep doing it, um, that's great. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to forgive 70 times 7. Yeah, that's hard. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's commitment. It is, mm -hmm. and over and over and mm -hmm. over and over again, but just releasing themselves from the pain, yeah. And uh, um, with the people the, that come in, um, what is the one thing, I know you mentioned acceptance before, but what's one of the things after 30 years that you have seen that has been the true key to um, seeing their, their souls restored? Hope. Hope. Mm -hmm. I, I think that you can see it once, once they start to get it that really there's going to, I have some opportunities and I have some resources um, that, that you, it, you can see that hope wash over them. Yeah. And we can't dream without hope. Hope and dreams are kissing cousins. <laughs> and so as they get their hope back, do you see their dreams coming back? Definitely. Okay. Yeah, and, and the belief that they can achieve some of those dreams. Um, one of the girls that um, we worked with quite a few years ago um, started a job where she has an aspiration for um, a certain career, mm -hmm. and where she's working right now will help her to pay for some of the schooling for that career. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just really neat to see her be able to move forward in that. It's taken a long time to move forward yeah. in that. Um, and also some people who have just really um, been down because of health issues. And a lot of that was because of the trauma in their life just really affected their health. Sure. And so we're able to move back into the field that they had come out of and just be able to help people. Giving back and doing something does a lot for people. Yeah. It really does. So it's the forgiving, it's the giving back and um, allowing themselves to be able to be put in a position where they're reaching out and they're touching mm -hmm. lives themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, Kit, I just want to thank you so much. Wow, 30 years <laughs> of serving others and mm -hmm. how beautiful that is and to be able to be a part of that beautiful forward movement, that, that restoration um, that only God can do. So just want to say thank you so much for being on Join Our Town today. Thank you. Thank you. And I just want to thank our viewers. Thank you so much for being with us today on Join Our Town. You take care.